Good morning. Welcome to all of you this morning, especially our guests and visitors. We are so happy to be together worshiping today. Today, uh, Jesus tells us a little bit about why he came, and that was to talk to us. He has good news for us about the kingdom of God. Let's stand up and we'll begin with our first hymn together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. 
but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. In the Word, God assures us that the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us covers all of our sins. I announce his grace to all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hands. Forget not the afflicted. The Lord is King forever and ever. The nations perish from his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, so that the man who is of the earth may strike terror no more. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Jeremiah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13. I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue, there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. 
Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appeared, appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he lays his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Usually when somebody says to you, we need to talk, you get the feeling that you're in trouble. Somebody's unhappy about something, you've done something you're not supposed to, you're going to lose your job or, or something bad's going to happen. But this morning I want you to hear those words in a different way, those words we need to talk. And that's because in the gospel lesson this morning, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus epiphanies, if you will, he reveals the reason for which he came. In verse 43, Jesus says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Jesus came to speak, to proclaim, to preach the good news of God's kingdom. Does that surprise you? It might. If we were to ask, why did Jesus come? You might give any number of different answers. You might remember something that Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, don't think that I came to abolish the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill them. So Jesus came to be obedient to the will of his Father and be righteous in our place. Or maybe you thought of all those stories Jesus told about lost sheep, or a lost coin, or a wandering son, telling us that the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. The lost are those who have somehow wandered away from God, and of course we can't get back on our own, so our Savior Jesus has come to bring us back home. Or maybe you remember the time that the disciples were arguing about who was the greatest. And Jesus said, it's not like that in my kingdom. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to give up his own life to pay for our sins and bring us back together with God. Or maybe you think of Jesus talking about good shepherds and bad shepherds, and Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Even though we were dead in our transgressions and sins, Jesus makes us alive again through his own powerful death and resurrection. But in this moment, Jesus said that the reason he came was to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. That's what he came to do. And that's exactly what he does in Capernaum in the synagogue. He's teaching there on the Sabbath and people were amazed. Because he didn't cite other experts, he didn't quote references, he spoke as if he were the authority. He was the living, breathing word of God. And then Jesus speaks to a demon, a demon who's possessed a man, and Jesus tells him, be silent, come out of him, and the demon obeys. And then Jesus speaks to a fever. He goes to Simon's house, and Simon's mother-in-law is sick with a fever, and Jesus rebukes the fever, and it leaves her, and she is well again. And because Jesus has, has done all of these things, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And because he did that, the next day, people sought him and came to him, And they wanted him to stay. They didn't want him to leave. And they were certainly not there simply for the sermon. They were not there for a Bible story. They were there to be healed. They were there for Jesus to do something for them. And that's why he wanted them to stay. And that's why Jesus has to remind them, I came to preach the good news. I came to speak to you. It was about 12 years ago that the youth summer mission trip was to the inner city part of Atlanta. And the church where we served uh, gave a a barbecue the very last day. And everybody in the community was invited. And a number of homeless people showed up there. And it was really kind of fascinating talking to them. Because they knew on any day of the week where they could go and get a breakfast or get a lunch or get supper. And they knew what would be required of them. If you go to the soup kitchen at the Uptown Mission, there is a 10-minute devotion, and then you get some soup. And it's usually pretty good. If you go to this church on the west end of town, 
they give you a box lunch. There's no worship service. There's just a meal that they give you. Other places, they had to attend a worship service. But all of these places where they went, they weren't there for the sermon. They weren't there for the Bible study. They were there for a meal. They were there for the food. And everybody knew that. We were just doing our best to minister to them. You know, by the same token, I know that not all of you come to church for the sermon. I know that you don't all come to hear a teaching from the Bible. How do I know that? Well, I, I talk with all of you. And the things that you share with me reveal why you've come. Sometimes you're here to thank God for some amazing blessings in your life. He's heard your prayers and, and somebody has been healed or he's given you a new opportunity. Sometimes you're here because God hasn't answered your prayers the way you thought he would. And somebody wasn't healed or you didn't get the job. And even though you came with all boldness and confidence to the throne of grace, you didn't get God's mercy. It's what you expected. That's, that's what you thought you would get from him. And then sometimes as you're walking out of the church, your comment is, where are the cookies? And we know exactly why you came to church. But we don't always come to hear what God has to say. But that's exactly what Jesus comes to do. Jesus comes to speak to us. His word is living and active. And the word of God read where we are gathered together is God speaking to his congregation, to his gathered people, his promises, his warnings, things about the future, things that happened in the past that show his faithfulness. Jesus comes to address the demons among us. And it's not that you're all demon-possessed, but there are some things that haunt us. There are some things in our lives that seem to control us. There are some things that we just can't get out of our minds sometimes, and Jesus addresses these things. Jesus says, you don't have to be anxious. You can cast all your cares on me, and I'll take care of those things. I've come to set you free from the things that are holding you back. Sometimes Jesus comes to address our fevers, and not just our illnesses, although we do thank him for his healing in our lives. Whatever has you all hot and bothered? Jesus has words for. Jesus continually reminds us he still has all authority in heaven and earth. He is still on the throne. He is still the Lord. We're in his hands and no one can snatch us from them. So we don't have to worry. But most importantly, Jesus comes to talk to you. He wants to talk to you about two things. He wants to talk to you about your sin. And he wants to talk to you about the cross. That was his message from the very beginning of his ministry. Repent and believe the good news. We all have sin that needs to be addressed. And God's word will address it in our lives. But we also have a savior who has addressed our sin by his suffering and death on the cross. He's paid for it all and you are freed from it. You are forgiven. And when Jesus comes to talk to you, it is not just more noise in your life. You know, Paul talked about that, right? You can speak very eloquently, but if it doesn't have love, it's just noise. God's word to you is motivated by his love for you. God's word to you is about his great love for you. It's about how much he loves you and has prepared a place for you in the future. He has shown us his love, that he has given us his son to be the sacrifice for our sins. He speaks from love about his great love. God has been coming to speak to his people for a long, long time in all kinds of different ways. He spoke to Moses in an amazing burning bush that wasn't consumed to let them know that he was going to deliver his people. Sometimes God spoke through prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, any number of prophets who told them, this is what the Lord has to say. Pay attention. Sometimes God spoke to his people through dreams. Jacob had lots of dreams. Joseph had dreams. God was revealing his word to them. Sometimes he spoke through angels. Angels who announced the birth of a child like he did to Zechariah or to Mary. 
But now in these last days, the Bible says he has spoken to us by his son. And when Jesus says we need to talk, that's because he wants to talk to you. And there are some great we need to talk moments in scripture. Like that time uh, Jesus was in Bethany. And he goes to the tomb of Lazarus. And he says, roll the stone away. We need to talk. He says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus walks out alive. He is the Lord of life. At another time in Bethany, he's having a visit with Martha and Mary. And Ma uh, Martha is very, very busy. Lots of things to do when Jesus comes to your house. Jesus says, come in here. We need to talk. Mary has chosen the good thing. Listen to what your Lord has to say. On the Sea of Galilee after the resurrection, Jesus sits down with Peter. We need to talk. Because Peter had denied his Lord and thought that was the end. And Jesus needed to remind him that he loved him. And asked, Peter, do you love me? I need you. I need you to go feed my sheep. Or how about the woman at the well? She comes at noon, hoping nobody else will be there. Jesus says, no, we need to talk. Because I've got water for you. And I am your Messiah. Our Lord comes to talk to you and to me. As if we were the only ones in the room. Love, uh, words that come from love. Words that we definitely, absolutely need to hear. And it is a great reminder of the church's mission. Yes, the church is here to help people, whatever their need might be. And whatever we do for the least of these brothers and sisters of Jesus, whether it's clothing or feeding or housing them, we are doing as if we were serving the Lord himself. And we know what God requires of us, to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with our God. But we also know that Jesus said to his disciples, to his followers, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And if the reason Jesus came was to speak, then our mission is also to speak the good news of God's kingdom. The Great Commission was to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything Jesus has taught us. We have so much to say to the next generation and to those who are coming to know the Lord about what Jesus has said. Jesus said that repentance and forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed to all nations because the church has been sent to speak, to talk. We need to talk about our Lord. Yes, we need to live out our faith, but sometimes we need to let people know what that faith is all about. We need to talk. Now, some of you are very excited by that because some of you really like to talk. And you've got to jump on the rest of us to help us along with this. Don't let us ever forget that that is what the church does. We talk. God speaks to us and we give him our thanks and our praise. We confess our faith right out loud. We let people know what our Lord has done. We teach and we preach and we confess our faith. And what a marvelous privilege that is. That's why Jesus was sent. That's why we've been sent into the world. To speak. It has to be a part of our conversations because it is part of who we are. His story has become our story. Good news of the kingdom. Whenever you travel, I hope you go and visit other churches. Because you need to see just how many different places Jesus goes to speak. Good news about the kingdom. All over the place. All kinds of different languages. All kinds of different styles. All kinds of different people. But the same message, the good news of his kingdom. People of God, we need to talk. Thank God and amen. Thank you, Lord, for talking to us today. Thank you for confronting us with our sin and showing us once again the cross where you bled and died for us. Thank you for once again assuring us of your forgiveness. And Lord, thank you for giving us such a compelling message to speak each and every day with our friends, with our family, with our community. Thank you, Lord, for our mission and ministry. Thank you for sending us as Jesus was sent into this world. In his name, amen. 
And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand. You may be seated as we worship the Lord with our offerings. Let's join together in prayer. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, we bring you our thanks and praise today, our prayers and our petitions. We come speaking the things in our minds and on our hearts because you have come to speak to us. And you have reminded us that the kingdom is yours and that we get to be a part of your family and part of your church. And you bless us in so many ways. Lord, do speak to those things that worry us, that haunt us, that bother us, and remind us of your presence and your power, your provision and your protection. Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray for your church that she would never be silent, but always be bold in speaking the good news of the kingdom. And we thank you, Lord, for the voices of our children who lift them up in prayers and and praises and remind us of your great love for us who are also your children. Heavenly Father, we pray you you bless our nation and those who rule us. We pray for many who are sick and we ask your special blessing on those who care for the sick. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for our freedoms, especially our freedom to worship and to speak the good news about Jesus Christ our Lord. Heavenly Father, continue to bless our church. We pray, Lord, that you would Help us to take advantage of all the opportunities for mission and ministry that you have laid before us. Lord, with our eyes fixed on you, we trust you to continue to increase our knowledge of you and our faith. In Jesus' name, Lord, we do pray for healing and grace for many. For George, as he awaits his placement and the care that he needs, and for for all those uh, in our nursing homes, Lord. Thank you for those who devote themselves to caring for them. Lord, do let your healing be with Maddie this week and her procedure, and with Rick, also with Bobby Coral, and with Lou's mom and Sheila, and Betty and Carl, Mark and Sherry and Michaela, and Ed and Nova. Lord, give your strength to Denise and Kim, and let your blessing be with May and Roger, Susan and Paul, 
Michael and Allison, John and Ron. Heavenly Father, bless our families. Some families face challenges, some families are large, some families are small. We pray that you would bless us, Lord, and we thank you for the gift of our relationships. Continue to bless the Fetters and their mission in Romania, and be with Pastor Slavic and his children and wife, and also his church. Lord, bless all those in our military. Keep them safe and let them serve honorably, especially Cody and Abigail and Julia, Tyler and Kelly, Colin and Gregory, and Nick and Christian. And bless our moms, Lord, expecting their babies soon. Tracy and Anne, Megan and Amber, Mackenzie and Courtney. Thank you so much, Lord, for your word, which speaks to us, speaks to our church, speaks to our demons and even our fevers, but always speaks to us of life. In Jesus' name. Do you have any other prayers that you would like to include this morning? Lord, as we come to your altar, once again, we hear your words that tell us to come and eat and drink, that remind us that here at the altar, we receive forgiveness of our sins and salvation and eternal life. Thank you for all your gifts of grace, Lord, and thank you for hearing all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also.
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us also toward the same faith in you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
thank and praise God for our worship together today. Uh, thank you in advance for filling out your emergency contact forms. And if you have any questions about Stephen Ministry, we are here to help you with that. And thank you, Bell Choir, and Denise and Dave, for all your music. God bless.